Hello, and welcome to another air engine research update. It's been about a month since I last uh, did a video, and there's a couple of reasons for that. It's been extremely cold the last month, and also there's been the holidays, Christmas and New Year's, and I've started having some uh, tingling and numbness in my left arm from vertebrae problems in my neck, so I'm having some therapy done on that. But I'm still thinking and working on what's going on. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about the, the valve problems that I've been having, and the major thing was that if the engine happened to run backwards for any, any reason, the valves would get bent with the camshaft system that I had. So I've decided to come out with a with a different one. But I'll show you what the cam one was before I get to that. This is the way the cam system works. It's got three cams. The top cam is just a, an adjustment for timing. The center one is the intake and the bottom one would be the exhaust valves and the exhaust valves looking at it from the top the camshaft rotates to the right or clockwise and if for some reason the engine tends to run backwards or gets pushed backwards then the lump on the cam of that center one and on the bottom one won't let the white slider slide because of the angle that it's at and it ends up just bending the valve when the camshaft turns backwards so that's no good now when I was building it how that one looked and how it ran. The next one that I come up with now is a system where I can put a ring around the drive shaft and that will allow me to have like a lobe and it will push and pull that ring which in turn pushes and pulls each one of the valves in turn. And that one works well. It can run either direction and it won't affect anything. So I'll let you see how that is running. On the valve uh, push rod system for the last week, making parts and putting it together, and I finally have it ready to try running. We'll see how it goes. I'll start off with two cylinders. see how that goes. Now I've got the work or the motor or the engine sitting on my workbench right now and I need to make some uh, brackets that mount to the bottom side of the engine so I can mount it back on my test vehicle whenever the weather warms up and I can get out and do some more testing on it. I'm going to use my propane tank that that has pulled behind the vehicle and I'm also going to have a smaller tank that will be mounted in front of the vehicle. 
That way I can have like six or 700 PSI in my propane tank and use a pressure regulator to control the pressure in a smaller tank to say like 200. That way I'll be able to have the higher pressure and still maintain a, a lower pressure for running the engine without having to try to regulate the, the pressure fast there. It can be maintained to 200, say, in the small tank. Uh, so I'll be working on that some later. And also, uh, while I've been sitting around thinking about things, uh, I've said in the past that there isn't any way to to reclaim the exhaust once it's been used in the in the engine. And possibly there might be a way. It may not be able to reclaim all of it, but I'm thinking if I could just reclaim maybe a fourth, or what if I could reclaim a third of the air? That would still increase the distance traveled considerably. So I've got an idea that I'm going to work on. It's going to take some time. I've got to figure out volumes and pressures and switching and all that sort of thing. And one of the main problems with this new idea is that it's going to have to have electric valves on it or electronic valves because of the the speed that it has to be done at and the timing that it has to be uh, controlled with. But what I want to try to do is save some of the exhaust air before it's exhausted in a small reservoir and then let the rest of the air be exhausted so that when the piston comes up to the top the pressure that was in the cylinder prior to the exhaust I want to let that pressure go into the cylinder to partially pressurize it either a fourth of the way or a third of the way whatever it works out to before I release the the high pressure air from the tank into the cylinder which I'm hoping by doing that I can reclaim maybe a, a fourth or a third of the air and save that much and give it that much greater distance to travel with the amount of air that we have in our main storage tank. But it's going to take some time to try to work all those details out. But when I do, I will certainly make a video letting you either know I've come up with a reasonable plan or I finally decided that it won't work. So anyway, thanks for checking in and for any new subscribers, I hope you enjoy seeing what we're doing. And if you'll go back and look at the past videos, there's quite a few interesting things that I'm sure you enjoy seeing. So until then, thanks for checking in and I'll see you soon.